Hootie hoo, all my stock market gamblers. Welcome today. I'm Tall Mike. I'm so glad you're here today. What do we got going on in the markets? Markets are off to the races. We had good news come out. Good news. Inflation is only at 8.5%. 8.5% year over year. In other words, prices are about 8% higher than they were this time last year. Now, I'm not sure I believe all that, but okay, let's go with 8%. But the market really liked this. Dow Jones is up about five, six hundred points. NASDAQ up over 300 points. We're in rally mode right now. Now, okay, so how's this going to play out going forward? Well, I do have a small short position. A lot of people are covering their short positions right now. That's why we're getting this big rally today. Everybody that was on the short side of the boat, they're covering their short positions and that's creating the market to spike up higher. And we may get another day or two of that to play out. But here's what, what I'm looking at. Here's this is just my take. This is what I'm looking at. Okay, so the Dow Jones Industrial Average, it hit a, it's about high, about 37,000 back in January, dropped below 30,000, right? So it had like a 7,000 point drop. And it's recovered about 3,500 of that. So it's had a 50% retracement. I love 50% retracements. Okay, so it's up here at 37, dropped down here to 30,000. Now it's about 33 and change. Okay, so the same with the SPY. The SPY, I watch really closely. That's the S&P 500. Now S&P, uh, SPY was about 470 at its high, dropped down to 370, dropped 100 points. But we've now rallied back 50 points, 50 points. We're up about 420, right? So that's the 50% retracement of the drop. Now, what usually happens at that point? At that point, it usually reverts back. It gives some of it back. It gives some of that drop back. The rally it's had, it'll give some back. That's why I am still have my short position on. Now, you may have a completely different take on the market. You may have the take that they're going to push it up to new all-time highs from here. Now, I do believe we're going to get to new all-time highs. I just don't think we're there yet. I don't think they're going to they have the ammunition to push it up yet they're trying they got that spending bill coming out we're going to get more stimulus down the road they're going to send out more checks i'm sure because that's how they stimulate the market you know and we got that election coming up and they want everybody to be happy so send the money that usually makes people happy makes me happy when people send me money okay so let's uh that's my take on the stock market. I do have a small, small short position. I'm mostly in cash. I have a small short position on, and I think eventually this market's going to come back in. We'll see if that plays out. Now, let's move over to the real estate market. Today, I want to talk about the great real estate reset. Now, a lot of people do not understand what a reset is. A reset is just, it's going to transfer money from one party to the other. This is going to be a great wealth transfer. Okay, now how's it going to play out? Well, that I'm not completely sure of, but I want to talk about how the, it used to be in the housing market. Now, when my parents, when I was growing up, my parents, my mom never worked. My dad, he worked, all right, so he had a job, right? And he could afford to buy a house. He could afford to have his wife stay at home, and he could afford to have a couple of children, and we could take vacations every year. We had a nice lifestyle. It was a very good childhood for me growing up, right? Okay, so shift forward to my generation. Now, my generation, uh, you could no longer do it on one income, right? I mean, you could not go out and buy a house and have a wife that stayed at home and had a couple of children. You you would not be making enough money. So you needed two people to work. So the wives went to work. So you had the two working incomes, right? Okay, so those two incomes could afford to buy the house and maybe have a child or two and you'd raise them up. All right. Now let's move forward to where we are today. Can you buy a house with two working incomes? You may, might be able to squeak by, but actually in my area, it's getting very difficult. What we're seeing now is maybe two families combined together to live in one house, and that way they can afford to buy the house. They each own half of it. On my street, I see sometimes there's 10 or 12 people living in a 1,200-square-foot house because these 1,200-square-foot houses are now selling for 2 or $3 million in my area, which is completely ludicrous. I'll be the first to 
admit that, but it's not possible to have the lifestyle with just one person working or maybe not even possible to have the lifestyle with two people working. Things have shifted. Now, why have they shifted so much? What's changed? What's changed? Well, what's really changed is your dollar just doesn't buy as much anymore. Yeah, house prices are up, but are they really, you know, is that why they're up or is it because our dollar keeps losing purchasing power? I think our dollar keeps losing purchasing power and that way people cannot afford to live on what they're making. Yeah, their income's up, but look at, uh, I mean, from where my parents' income to my income to now the incomes, they go up, but they don't go up enough. The dollars comes down more. The dollar loses more purchasing power than the income makes up for and this shifts to what you can afford. It, it, it teaches you what type of lifestyle you have. Uh, it, now, it, it, if you want a good lifestyle, do we revert back to the old ways or we do continue to move forward where we get maybe 20 or 30 people living in a house? I'm not sure. Which way do you want it to go? Well, let's talk about some other stuff. All right. So these are just rough numbers. I want to go over these with you. In 1980, the average price home was about $40,000. $40,000. Okay, now the Dow Jones Industrial Average, well, that was down around a thousand, maybe a little bit lower. So about 40, 40 to one ratio, right? But Dow Jones and to the average price of a house. Okay, that's all right. Uh, what was gold at back then? Well, back then gold was about eight hundred dollars an ounce. Eight hundred dollars an average house was well forty thousand. So well, it took about fifty ounces of gold to buy the average price house. Okay, now what was silver at? Well, silver. Silver was at, well, uh, is at $50, right? $50. Back in 1980, silver was at $50. Okay, average price house, $40,000. It took 800 ounces, 800 ounces of silver to get you the average price home. Okay, let's move forward to today. Today, we got the average price home about $400,000. That's a, a rough number. Okay, $400,000 up. The Dow Jones, the Dow Jones is, well, well, it's at 33,000, let's call it. So it takes about 12 times the Dow Jones Industrial Average to get to the $400,000 house. So a 12 to 1 ratio there, right? Okay, well, what about gold? Well, gold's about, what, 1,800 an ounce. So it takes about 220 ounces of gold to buy the average price home right now. Okay, that's interesting. Well, how much silver does it take to buy the average price home? Well, right now, silver, rough, rough price, $20 an ounce, average price home, 400,000. Okay, it takes 20,000, 20,000 ounces of silver to buy the average price home right now. Now, what does this tell me? What does this tell me? Well, what this tells me is that homes are outrageously priced, outrageously priced in compared to other assets. Okay, Dow Jones is, you know, very overpriced also compared to other assets. Gold, Gold's a little, you know, it's getting cheaper. It's not as overpriced as houses, not as overpriced as the Dow Jones, but, you know, let's call gold even. But the real bargain here, the real bargain here is silver. Silver is probably the cheapest asset on the planet right now. 20,000 ounces of silver to buy the average price home. My belief, and you can disagree with me all you want, my belief that in my lifetime, which hopefully it's still long yet, actually, let me do it this way, within the next 10 years, within the next 10 years, the price of silver, it will t come to a point again where it takes 1,000 ounces of silver to buy the average price home. Right now, it takes 20,000 ounces of silver, 20,000, okay, to buy the average price home. I'm saying it's going to come down and take only 1,000 ounces of silver to buy the average price home within the next 10 years. Now, it could happen a lot quicker. It could, matter of fact, it, it could happen within a year. I mean, things are changing that quick, and this is what a reset is. When things change so quickly, the reset happens, right? So, okay, so houses will get reset against other assets, okay? Now, my favorite asset in the world right now is silver, okay, because it's so cheap. Look, at you find me any other commodity, any other asset that in 1980 was twice as much as it is now. 
It just doesn't happen. It's not out there. It's not in the world. And I do believe that the reset, when things start to adjust, they start to adjust when either houses, they come down and they're going to drop like a rock or... Or we're going to get hyperinflation. The Fed would love to see hyperinflation, right? Because then the debt goes away in hyperinflation, but everything, the country just goes straight down. You get hyperinflation, maybe silver comes up to $400 an ounce and maybe the house stays exactly where it's at. Okay, so that's how you could reset it that way, where silver moves up to 400 an ounce and the house is 400,000. Okay, but my guess is they're going to meet somewhere in between. Houses are going to come down and that silver price is going to come up. And within 10 years, they will be able to buy a house with a thousand ounces of silver. Once again, this is just my opinion. Now, I know people will tell me, Mike, silver's done nothing. Look, it, it was twice as much in 1980. If if I've owned it since 1980, I'd have half as much right now than I did back then. That is absolutely true. Absolutely true. 100% true. But I'm telling you, what are the big banks buying right now? Well, they're buying gold. They're buying gold. Now, silver is going to outperform gold. There's a silver to gold ratio. And that ratio, you know, it, normal is about 30 to 1. Right now, it's up around, let's call it 90, 90 to 1. Let's call it there. Okay. So 30 to 1 is normal. So it's going to outperform gold at a three to one rate okay and I believe that I believe that okay so my point is that, that you should have some physical silver it, you know a thousand ounces right and I, maybe you can't afford to go out and buy a thousand ounces but if you bought like one ounce one ounce twenty dollars okay you gotta pay that five dollar premium now so let's call it 25 bucks I'm pretty sure you can get about twenty five dollars I'm pretty sure you could get about one a week and if you started stacking them one a week eventually they add up they do they do anyways I think a thousand ounces of silver will be able to be traded for the average price home. This is once again my opinion. This is how I see the reset playing out in the housing market. Houses are extremely, extremely overvalued right now. And silver is extremely, extremely undervalued. I know a lot of people don't like hearing this. A lot of people go, Mike, I don't want silver. I can get into Bitcoin. And that's fine. Maybe Bitcoin works for you, right? Maybe that's the answer. I don't have all the answers. I know Bitcoin wasn't here in 1980. I couldn't use it as a comparison. Could not. But maybe Bitcoin's the way. Maybe it'll just keep taking off. Maybe Bitcoin will go to a million dollars of Bitcoin. And that's great. And then if you have Bitcoin, you can, you can trade it for houses. But I'm telling you houses are overvalued right now and they're going to be reset against other assets this is my opinion i'm tall mike if you like this stuff give me the thumbs up you really like it hit that subscribe button so we can talk again get out there have a great wednesday everybody bye bye now